I'd like to open uh, questions now to the public. <coughs> we already have one. Yeah, thank you very much. I have a question for Aune. Since those who were to the workshop where I was presenting my uh, ideas, you, you've realized that I'm uh, an individualist. And I don't uh, believe that society should have too strong influence on uh, one's identity. So I think identity is something very personal. And since, uh, so there is nothing personal, just a business, but you might feel a provocative, pro provocativity in my question. Uh, so what, can you explain what do you exactly mean by national identity and how do you teach it? Because when you were referring to Swedish studies, uh, where the result was that, that people didn't really have national identity and rather Scandinavian or even the worldwide identity. It seemed like a positive thing, but when you were referring to Estonia, you were basically saying that you failed in, in teaching national identity. Thank you. Uh, regarding, regarding Sweden, I didn't want to uh, have any sort of positive or negative uh, attitude towards the Swedish identity. It's just considering the, f I mean, I was, it was actually a surprise for all of us that the Swedish picture was so different from the Latvian, Estonian, and Finnish picture also, because in Finland, Latvia, Estonia, actually in all countries, the national identity was still the strongest. Just compared to the other countries, the difference between national and global or national and Scandinavian uh, mm -hmm. was, uh, was smaller in Sweden than in other countries. And in Sweden, all the identities really mattered quite little for the, for the, for the gymnasium. That's about Sweden. Uh, for the national identity, uh, in in this sense, here, I mean, it can be defined in tens, different, ten, tens of different ways, but in, in this study it was defined as a citizenship identity or the identity uh, concerned to the state. Not an, As you maybe noticed, we asked uh, as a separate question was about ethnic identity. And this was asked both from Russian speakers and from Estonian speakers, so it's a the problem is, of course, that in Estonia, uh, Estonians uh, make a little difference between national and ethnic. For Russian speakers, it would mean that the ethnic identity is, is Russian identity, and for the, the national identity is <coughs> Estonian uh, uh, citizen identity. Uh, the, there was an, this was a one question. Was it another question? Whether, uh, whether it has to be taught? How do you teach it? I mean, um, I totally agree with your individualistic viewpoint. Uh, we can say naively, I would say, then uh, being provocative also, that uh, we don't uh, shape it, we don't teach it, that it's a sort of individual matter. But could you imagine somebody sort of uh, uh, being raised up in the isolated way and developing any national identity? There is no national identity which is developed individually. It's always happening in the, in the collective ways. It's a question whether we talk about that, whether we do it consciously, whether it happens just unconsciously. And if we choose literature, if we teach history in a specific way, in, I mean, what kind of dances we dance, what kind of music we sing in the school, it's all about national identity. It's just a question whether we do it, whether we say it or we, it just happens. Uh, it's a, I, I could talk hours. <laughs> but you wanted to ask a question also. No, no I would uh, like to, uh, to, comment, to comment that from my part of point of view, whether we like it or not, we, the, the issue national identity is something we have to, to it, it's a challenge for us. For me, I'm in my 60s. I have another point of view, but the kids, the students, they are so much global than I ever will be. So for them, national identity might not be the biggest issue. And that's our challenge, that we have to kind of listen in what's going on out there. Th this is the first thing. And also about, we had a discussion in Sweden, I think it was last spring, about Swedish values. What is Swedish values? That's a democratic values. It's not typical Swedish. Uh, so it's, uh, and, and it's also, and when we, when we study our history, it's also so, so full of international influences. We, well, maybe, the, I don't think we have any dish, any me meal that we can call typical Swedish. Maybe this infermented herring. 
<laughs> in the very p uh, part north. Not Swedish meatballs, no? <laughs> no, we bought them from Turkey. Okay. Uh, called the uh, 12 something. No, is it that right? Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> it's, it's, I think we have to kind of. Uh, the, the national identity, is that an important question? And in, if so, why? And how, who are included? As in, in these days, in turbulent times, I think we have to. Mm, identity is important, but national identity. I'm not so mm. sure. Um, just a short note about why identity is important. It's um, there are several motives uh, that identity helps to to fulfill, mm. and uh, and the, the the question is, of course, on what level the identity should be on the European, on the global, on the national, on the regional, or on the family level. And the, as an identity psychologist, the more you have, the better for you. Mm. And so you I can actually choose. And I have uh -huh. multiple identities. Yeah, yeah, that everybody <laughs> of us has. But and then the national identity is important in order mm. for us to to pay taxes for the country, mm. why I should mm. do that, why, why I should care. I mean, it's about so solidarity. With a low mm. European identity is the thing that we see now in Europe. It's, it's just the question whether we are, whether we are, whether we are so, so solidary to the, mm. to the Greece problems, for example. Mm. It's about mm. European identity. Yeah. If we don't have it, then it's their problem. Mm. Any more questions? Was that the only question? in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask a question to Rasmus, Please. actually. <laughs> you had, uh, in one of the slides, you showed that uh, uh, the, the student groups, uh, I think you had like 60-70% Estonian, 30-40% Russian, that was your vision. But at the same time, you're open to everybody, so you, you're inclusive, you don't choose your students, or will you choose? How, do you, how, how will you guarantee that you will have this kind of mix of students? <laughs> <laughs> well, as you said yourself, there needs to be a recruiting strategy. Mm. Mm, I think that the, um, given well, like in Kala, Maya context or in Tallinn, uh, if you would take just a natural uh, cross section of the sort of population, you would have that. Mm -hmm. You would have uh, in Bohia, Tallinn, north north uh, area of Tallinn, you would definitely have uh, some thirty percent, forty percent of Russian. Uh, natives, uh, Russian-speaking uh, families. Um, so, like, if it would be a public school, it wouldn't be a, mm -hmm. probably a big issue in this neighborhood that you would just uh, sub subscribe mm -hmm. naturally. But uh, for us, uh, w yes, we have decided to make, a, in that sense, a, a quota that we need to have a minimum of 20 p 20 percent of uh, Russian-speaking uh, uh, students in the in the group. Can I have a related question to? to you about the sort of the balance to, can you can you say is the good balance or is it a question that we should concern at all i mean is there a good balance of students from different backgrounds in these kind of schools <coughs> no i cannot say <laughs> good or bad it's, it, it 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 matters i think it's what is important is uh, rewind in sweden we have segregated area which kind of uh, have impact on how the composition of the students in the schools and there are so and then um, we have high need schools and we have schools with high socioeconomic standards etc etc but what is important the important is that you have good teachers the quality mm -hmm. of the teachers and the principals that's one thing i think it's it's that matters a lot Kids have no problem with many languages. We, who are, if we are not a monolingual country, but we think we are. <laughs> the problem is if you take a, away a language, they don't have that problems. You are, who work at the Multicultural Center maybe would like to add something about that. But we need good, I think also it's a matter of social class. The peer effect, if you have, students with from uh, homes with good support no matter background no matter ethnic background or li linguist mm -hmm. background it's a matter of of cultural capital more than lingual capital mm -hmm. from my concern and good qualified teachers mm -hmm. who really like their job and and look for the students mm -hmm. best in focus not the teachers best the students best mm -hmm. 
And hopefully the teacher's best too, of course. Mm. I have a quick question for everyone, but maybe uh, mostly directed at Aona in the sense that um, w everything that we've spoken about, obviously Sweden is one of these countries where you have, uh, it's a very affluent country where you have uh, financial, uh, um, f financial situations uh, are, are secondary in that sense, uh, as opposed to maybe in comparison to other countries like Estonia. Uh, when uh, you mentioned that it's a matter of uh, good teachers, then obviously that requires an investment. Good teachers, it's not, uh, uh, it's not a, uh, the reason we don't have good teachers is because we haven't invested uh, in good teachers and because we don't give them the opportunity to become good teachers but when, whether it's a matter of salaries or, or whatnot. Uh, so my question here is also to you, um, the school, uh, it's, it's an innovative idea and uh, obviously a very costly one as well. Um, it's, it's definitely something that you would need to invest a lot into. So how possible is this um, from a financial, I mean, is that maybe the reason why uh, the Ministry of Education or uh, as a, it has become a secondary priority? I mean, <coughs> is it behind, uh, um, is the financial situation uh, uh, a deterrent for the development of our educational system? Mm. In this question, I mean, I, I think finances is always the question in education. Education is an expensive thing. And so it's it's and and the teacher salary and the, having the good teachers and salary is a, in a sign of, of 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 valuing the profession is the the highest agenda in the ministry. It's the the, the most important topic, and the aim is that uh, our teachers should get uh, 120 percent of the of the average salary and. Uh, and currently, it's 107 percent of the of the what what, what people in Estonia in average earn, and that's quite. I mean, we have been the country where the teacher's salary has been r r r raising, r raising most quickly during last five years in among all OECD countries. Which, of course, it's something to say about which level we came from. Uh, so, so teachers uh, and the teacher's salary is very crucial. But I wouldn't say that in this question, the, the money question is the most important. And I'm, I wasn't mm -hmm. implying just the salary also. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the general investment in education, the reason of the stagnation. Is it because we're afraid or is it because, um, because we're not capable? Oh, it would be interesting what the others think. But I, I, I would say that it's, it's more the question of attitudes than the money here. Mm. That of course, in this kind of school, it would be nice to have more support personnel, like the the assi assistant teacher, which cost more, uh, and um, and actually every child at the moment in uh, Estonian speaking school, which has a different uh, mother tongue, is considered that the child with a special need, which means actually additional funding for the school. So, but I wouldn't say that uh, that that's the main question. I would say that it's. Uh, we are sort of afraid of, uh, of, of changing the balance at the moment. That's, that's my view, but I'm happy to hear the... The school as an inst institution is um, perhaps uh, rightly so very... Uh, um, there is a lot of inertia and m m much of this inertia c comes from the, the fact that uh, teachers um, they mostly teach the way they were taught. Uh, this is one. And the other is that the parents think of a school as they were mm -hmm. in school. So this is their conception of what school is, mm -hmm. both for, for parents and, and teachers who make the most influential stakeholders in the mm -hmm. school setting. And uh, doing anything differently requires a really strong proof that this is, uh, this is a better system. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that there is a lot of reasoning why why schools are are slow to uh, to to adapt to changing uh, uh, conditions. Uh, so basically, you need good examples. You need some role models. Maybe also a place to be able. To, if you end up creating these students who are um, used to being extremely effective, but end up uh, with jobs where effectivity is not. Uh, the highest requirement, then maybe that is, uh, uh, there's nowhere to position these extreme, except what if they were the people to maybe start um, uh, innovating these situations or, or, or higher um, 
um, higher effectiveness in the mm. workplace, maybe even in the future. But, but yeah, yes. just a short note, I think it's also, which is very much related to the topic of this conference, is that multiculturalism as such is considered more as a problem than opportunities still in Estonia. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in, in a, my school or where my youngest child goes, there we discussed how the parents can contribute to the school. And I said, I can talk to you something about multicultural things. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, luckily we don't have this problem. <laughs> so, so that's the kind of view. I mean, I can't generalize it to all, but, but that's the... Okay, uh, we have definitely run out of time. I thank you, our uh, wonderful speakers, Katarina uh, Norberg, Aune Valk, and Rasmus Rask, for uh, their very interesting uh, presentations. And thank you all for coming to the conference.